All right, ladies and gentlemen, you must have seen a lot of videos on Saturn's transit into the sign of Aquarius as per Vedic sidereal astrology. But I'm indrikpanchang.com and I see there is something interesting happening with Jupiter. What's going on with Jupiter here? Jupiter is hemmed between two natural malefics. Actually, more than two. Why do I say more than two? If you see two, uh, you will see Saturn is now in Aquarius and Jupiter is in Pisces. So Saturn is in the 12th uh, from Jupiter and then second house from Jupiter. We have Rahu who is placed, right? And on 22nd April this year, Jupiter is going to enter the sign of Aries, right? So, which means till 22nd April, he is under Pap Kartri, which is when a planet is having a malefic in the 2nd and another malefic in the 12th from its position. But we see Rahu, Uranus uh, are in the 2nd and, you know, Neptune and Saturn are in the 12th. So, that is why I said it's actually more than two. Now, I'm not saying that Uranus and Neptune are uh, natural malefics. But they can amplify the malefics at times, you know, especially Uranus and Rahu sometimes. Okay. So, therefore, till the third week of April, Jupiter is officially under Papkartri Yoga. So, now what happens when there's Papkartri Yoga? What, what does it mean, you know? Papkartri Yoga. What, what, what does it mean? When you hear, you feel, you know, uh, you know what is Papa? You know, Papa is something like sin or something which we should not do, something which is unethical or something like that. Mm, okay, Kartri, okay. What does it actually mean? See, Papkartri Yoga, it, it means that when a planet is in Papkartri, then there is some hindrance for the planet. Which is like saying, the planet cannot do what it wants. Why? Because to do something in life or to do anything in life, you need two things. Oops, two. <laughs> what are those two things? One is you need a positive outlook towards the future. And you need some uh, positive experiences from the past, right? Positive doesn't mean that there are only good experiences, but you... Learn to take them in a positive way. So you have the past and the lessons. You may like them or you may not, but they're there, right? And then you have a vision for the future. So the vision for any planet comes from the second house from that planet. Because second house is the uh, natural gain of that house, right? And the uh, 12th house shows how we... Take the things from the past. Which means the 12th house from a planet, you can check this for transits or you can also check this on your natal birth chart, right? So, for example, you, you can find, I have uh, seen a lot of examples where you have Saturn 12th house from Venus, okay? So, for example, if Saturn is in... Aries, then your Venus is in Taurus. Okay, it's something like that. So then, what does it mean? Uh, then Venus uh, is having Saturn in 12th. This means that you have difficulty in taking positive experiences. Or rather, I would say you have difficulty in uh, taking experiences in a positive way in terms of relationships, right? So this means you bring on the crap from your past relationships to the present and you start punishing your present partner for all the misdeeds of your X or other Y, Z. <laughs> Why does it happen? Because when Saturn is in the 12th house from a particular planet, you're only focused on the negatives. Saturn is negativity. Saturn represents things that you don't like. So, Whenever Saturn is in 12th from any planet, you just feel nothing related to that planet is good from the past, of course. But when Saturn is in the second from any planet, 
So, for example, Venus is in Taurus. And now Saturn is not in Aries, he's in Gemini for the newcomers. So then what happens? Then maybe you take your past experiences in a good way or maybe you don't take them, depending on which planet is in the 12th from Venus. But since Saturn is in the second from Venus, you always feel that maybe your current relationship will not work out. Or maybe you are hopeless about relationships in general or you may be in a relationship but you are totally convinced that someday there will be a breakup or your marriage will fall apart. You know, there's this, there can be this daunting, uh, self-deprecating feeling which, may, which can prevent you from uh, having a consistent relationship with somebody, right? So therefore, you have to understand what happens when there's a Papakarthri Yoga. So now what is happening is Jupiter is hemmed between Saturn. So now Saturn is in the 12th. So you got to check your chart. Which houses does Jupiter rule in your you know, horoscope depending on your uh, ascendant of course, right? So if Jupiter is ruling your Artha houses, which means the, uh, the second, sixth or the tenth, then it can mean, you know, that uh, you are unable to carry experiences from uh, your past financial assets or financial decisions. And if Jupiter is, you know, lording your uh, moksha trikonas, then maybe some very deep emotional experiences which you had in the past, you are not able to uh, see the positives from them. And of course, if Jupiter is lord of your uh, Dharma Trikon, which is 159, then it's but natural that certain things that you learned, maybe you are not able to use it in a proper way. So the past is not able to do justice, right? Or rather, you are not able to uh, make peace with the past, right? So therefore, you got to understand that when Saturn is in 12th from Jupiter, at least till April 22nd this year, it is possible that the houses which Jupiter rules in your chart, you are unable to see anything good that is manifesting in your current real, real, real world from the past, right? Which means, suppose... Uh, Jupiter is your fifth lord. So you had children, but you had some bad experiences. or you And you also had some good experiences. But now when you are dealing with your children, uh, it may be that you, know, you are being uh, too harsh on them or you are being too negative or too pessimistic on them. And this becomes very important. Do you know why? Because it's Jupiter. Jupiter is the source of all hope and uh, emblem of uh, optimism so when that planet has saturn in 12 from it uh, not a great placement and then of course we haven't discussed the elephant in the room <laughs> it's none other than rahu in the sign of aries right he's gonna be there in aries for some time at least so this is a very peculiar situation where you are not able to see the positives from the past but at the same time you have too much desires about the future you are obsessed with something in the future so it's like you want everything now when Rahu is in second from any planet you become over, uh, how do you say, right, you know, ultra, super duper, overconfident. It's not over, it's like over the top. <laughs> now, which can lead you to being very arrogant, okay? So now this is a situation where something from the past, you are not able to use it properly, but then you think you know it all. So this is like a royal recipe for downfall, right? So therefore... The most important thing that we need to understand for this transit is we have to try to see the positives from the past and be realistic about the future, right? Otherwise, 
one is giving us negativity the other one is giving us uh, false hopes of the you could say you know false hopes of the future right so therefore this this uh, placement of jupiter at least uh, so today i see it's around 17th of january so february march april so for the next three months more than three months actually you have to understand that you may sometimes feel that you need much more than you actually need or you want more than you actually need to put it the right way at the same time you have this feeling that you did not do well enough in the past right it's a very peculiar feeling which you can have from now because saturn has entered aquarius just some time back and therefore uh, it's important that we try to understand what is the reality along with the past and the future so if you do not understand the past you cannot understand the future so try to see the mistakes that you did in the past and try to rectify them in the current scenario and also try to be positive and realistic and also optimistic about your future so when you do that what happens is you will be able to understand that okay i might have had some bad experiences in the past and i want something in the future which which is which may not be uh, as i desire completely but it need not be that bad or i may not get everything that i want when you have this kind of a consciousness then you will uh, do your best and leave the rest to god as lord krishna says in the gita right you can only do uh, karma you cannot uh, control the results entirely right that's based on many other factors you know like god's desire karma and destiny and whatever free will all these things are there in the picture so therefore try to do what you can and leave the rest to god this is the best thing to do during this time so work hard but work hard with intelligence being uh, by being foresighted uh, for the future and also by being grounded to the reality and by being a bit compassionate on yourself for the past all right thank you very much for your patience if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation from me my website is down in the description section god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him thank you